Welcome to the Ask Dr. Deanna Show. I'm Dr. Deanna Osborne, your host. Join me weekly as I cover various health-related lifestyle medicine topics that you get to request. This show is for anyone who wants to proactively improve their health position. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the final episode in our Fasting February series. Uh, I am, uh, I've been excited to share this information with everybody and just kind of put it together in, in uh, a format that, that is easily digestible and that people can really wrap their, their brains around. Uh, Before we jump into today's episode, though, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my team at Genesis New Concord Family Practice, uh, to my my teammates there, uh, my supporting staff, as well as my colleagues um, who have just been absolutely like family to me and the most supportive team ever uh, over the past uh, seven years. And uh, I am going to miss all of you so, so very much. And I know um, not only uh, do you as staff listen in uh, to the podcast, but also so many patients from the practice. So I'm going to miss you there as well. And uh, I'm excited about the next chapter, uh, but just wanted to say how very much you mean to me and how impactful you have been in my life. So with that, um, the final episode of February's uh, Fasting February, uh, I thought today that it would be great to summarize um, just fasting. And I think the place to start with the summarization is really how to transition yourself from that initial 12-hour fast that we've talked about to ultimately getting to the 18-hour fast and why it is that you want to do that. So let's start with the 12. You know, I've often said in all of my podcasts that the 12-hour fast is something that we should all be doing every single night, no matter what the situation, um, that that we we were intended to fast for 12 hours. You know, that's one of the reasons they call it breakfast, because you're breaking your fast. And so 12 hours, it takes about 12 hours to burn through the sugar that is in your system. And after that, your body actually will start to burn some fat, um, which is a great benefit of the 12-hour fast. I also heard long ago in some of my functional medicine training early on that one of the best things that you could do from an anti-aging standpoint, specifically from an internal anti-aging standpoint, was to basically fast 12 hours every single night. And so I had made that a habit of just being mindful of always going 12 hours. But then this whole thing of intermittent fasting came in and I realized what a powerful tool this was. Uh, I implemented it with myself as well as with my patients and just got really incredible results from that. Uh, But after you have the 12 down, I typically will tell my patients to move to 14 hours of fasting and just to appreciate the fact that after the 12 hours for the next two, you are burning fat. And if you're at work and you're burning fat, well, that's great because you're not in the gym doing it. You're, you know, you're just doing your regular life and yet you're getting this benefit. After you have that down for a few days, you might even go a whole week with the 14 uh, uh, hour fast, then moving to the 16 hour fast. So a 16, eight window, which is where you fast for 16 hours. And then for eight hours, you have, you open up your eating window and you, you eat during that time. Um, that time period is again, fantastic. You're burning a lot of calories. Your metabolism has increased. You know, one of the great things when I last episode, I talked about, um, 10 Xing your metabolism, uh, which basically can be done with intermittent fasting because when you fast, you're actually having an increased level of human growth hormone, which is a big kind of like rocket fuel to your metabolism, if you will. So it's a great way to kind of supercharge things and get things moving in the right direction. Uh, But ultimately, you know, we eventually want to throw in some 18 hour fasts as well, some 18, six. And so, so typically what I do, I pretty much, you know, most days of the week, I'm a 16, eight person. That's a very easy pattern for me to be in. After that though, uh, usually about two days a week, I will do an 18, six. I might even do a 24 hour. And the reason I do that is that It takes after about 16, 17 hours, really, everybody's different. You know, it's not one size fits all, but for the most part, after 17 hours, 
that whole process called autophagy kicks in. Autophagy, remember, is that whole um, uh, process of cellular cleansing, cellular detox, cellular renewal that is built into our system. And so that's where that occurs. And so if you are really um, fasting, not just for weight management, but you're also fasting because of the health effects, the health benefits, and the longevity that's associated with it, th- then you will want to extend at least a couple of days a week just to get that benefit in there. And that's really how to transition. You know, everybody's different. Some people might, you know, maybe they 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 eat right before bed and they eat first thing when they get up in the morning. And so they, 12 hours is a stretch. And for that person, you've got to get the 12 hours down. That means maybe doing that for a week before you move to the 14 hour. And, you know, it's very, very important to pay attention to how you break your fast, what you break your fast with, um, because during your fasting period, you know, your blood sugar has stabilized. It's not low necessarily, but it is stabilized. Um, Your insulin levels have started to come down, although for some who have had chronic insulin resistance and chronic, uh, chronically elevated insulin levels, they will see that it, it takes a little longer. I mean, it might take over the course of two, three weeks to really pull those insulin levels down. But basically, um, you know, once you are, you know, moving uh, on that spectrum and and having all those things happen, it is absolutely amazing uh, to see the results that we get from weight loss to health. Uh, all of that um, just really makes an absolute um, tremendous difference. Uh, and um, you know, again, when you're breaking your fast, you want to make sure that you're getting nutrient dense foods uh, that you are low carb. Okay, so in my fasting window, I typically try to keep my, my gram of carbohydrates to under 50 grams in a day uh, during that fasting window. And then when I break my fast, I want to eat a, a, a protein that has a complete amino acid profile. So I typically will break my fast with, with a protein shake. Uh, I actually use a plant-based protein powder. It's 24 grams of protein per serving. It's got some avocado oil in it as well. It's got a complete amino acid profile. And so I know that I'm getting the nutrition that I need when I break my fast. Uh, sometimes I'll use a different protein that that is even lower in carbohydrate content. Uh, and uh, when I do that, um, you know, it's very, very low calorie, uh, low sugar, low calorie. Uh, I will end up, um, you know, maybe adding some additional fat to that, like a half an avocado, maybe a small handful of pecans, something like that when I break, first break my fast. Uh, and then I move on to another protein meal. Okay, I will will typically uh, have some form of you know clean uh, meat. Uh, it could be salmon. Um, it could be chicken. It could be you know grass fed beef. You know one of those organic chicken, something like that. Um, with a whole plate of vegetables is typically what you'll see me breaking my fast with. And, you know, I feel like I I don't really have to be mindful of calories so much during that fasting or that eating window. When I open up my eating window, I just basically am fueling my body during that time period. uh, And then I'm being mindful of the carbohydrate content, the, 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 you know, counting the carbs, not calories, but carbs. To make to allow myself to feel full and kind of go the distance with the fasting, I want to make sure that I'm getting some healthy fats in there as well. So, so that's really it in a nutshell. The benefits are incredible. The research is just keeps kind of pouring in uh, in terms of you know what we're seeing as far as uh, you know just the health benefits, um, you know lowered blood pressure readings, uh, improved uh, cholesterol levels, um, of course weight loss, but increased mental clarity. Um, you know, decreased joint pain. That's a big one. When I tell people no sugar, no grains, nothing to eat after dinner, if they can commit to that for one week, they're absolutely amazed at the, just the decrease that they experience in terms of joint pain, Uh, fibromyalgia, you know, just a lot of issues that we see that are inflammatory in nature. So, so that's really the kind of the summary of, um, of intermittent fasting. And, you know, I just want to encourage everybody to, um, you know, to, to, to give it a go, to give it a try. You know, I always say if you've ever had an eating disorder of any type, you absolutely, you know, I, this is not for you. You need to go and talk to your doctor uh, before starting a program and work with somebody. Okay. 
Um, but otherwise, for most people, um, you know, especially the 12 hour fast every night is absolutely a great idea and reducing the sugar. Do you know that in the 1950s, the average American consumed about two pounds of sugar per year? Today, the average American consumes 150 pounds of sugar per year. And sugar is inflammatory. It has a negative impact on every cell in our body. It causes insulin resistance. Of course, we know that. It also destroys the lining of the gut uh, and causes some problems there along with glyphosate and, you know, so many other chemicals that we uh, tend to be exposed to. And, you know, we have the answer, you know, we have the solution to this and something that we can do that can absolutely make a difference that can impact health um, for the long term. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited about what this means for so many people and how they can implement it and the results that they can get. If you've not listened to the rest of the series in February, I called it Fasting February primarily so that I can remember that the fasting segments are all in February and I can send my patients there um, as an easy get started. You know, fasting for beginners uh, is a great one um, when you're just learning new um, about learning how to do intermittent fasting for the first time. That's a great segment. And then also, if you love the content um, that I've been bringing in the podcast, you know, I would encourage you to pick up a copy of my book. Uh, it's Dr. Deanna's Healing Handbook. It's available on deannaosborne.com uh, is where you can grab that. And we go into just tremendous depth there. We do cover intermittent fasting. We cover insulin resistance. We cover, you know, so much of the science and the research is there. Uh, and, um, you know, even looking at glyphosate and the impact that it has, uh, and, you know, just a variety of things. So I'd encourage you to pick that up. Uh, take a look at that because it is a great resource to have. And uh, again, when putting that together, the idea was if I could put together a handbook, a healing handbook that would help patients get their health back on track, what would that include? What would it look like? What would I want to say to them? And that's really um, the position that I'm coming from in that book. You know, I have had issues with my health, with autoimmune issues um, in the past as well. Um, that's something that runs in my family. And so it's something that's that's very much been um, at the top of, of my mind as something that I think about and just how to help people live the best life that they can and the healthiest life that they can. And just to be able to, to move and, you know, to be able to make it uh, as long as they want to go. So thanks so much for joining me today. Um, definitely plug in uh, to our next series as well. And I'm excited uh, to bring, to be bringing that next week. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that episode. For more information, visit me at DeannaOsborne.com. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Deanna Osborne. I really want to hear from you, so message me. I love taking your messages and creating topics from them. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share my show with those who have an interest in health and wellness. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week.